This video covers material that goes over the concept of water pollution, the types of contaminants that may be found in water, and lastly, how is water quality determined. The material presented was originally developed by Andrew Lucas and modified and narrated by Alan Rodriguez. This video is made possible by the National Science Foundation funded project Vote of Knowledge in the Science Classroom at Ohio University. Now, I have some questions for you. Do you know why is water quality important? Or do you know how we can measure the water quality? What about water pollution? Do you know what it is? If you answer no to any of these questions, or even if you feel you should review these concepts, then I invite you to study and review with me the presentation titled Water Quality and Pollution. Am I drinking safe water? Now, before we can enter in full detail on our discussion about water quality and contaminants, we will briefly discuss why is this important to us. Join me as I go with you through this exciting topic of water quality and how this affects our lives. So here we are. The question is, why is testing water quality important? Well, that's very simple. It's because we're not alone in this world. Ever since the industrialization era, the amount of pollutants thrown into water was shoot and have affected significantly the habitats of hundreds of thousands of living organisms in water bodies. But the story doesn't just end up there. Water quality is also important because we use it on our daily lives and we need it for drinking, especially for basic needs recreation among other thousand reasons of why it's important to preserve a high water quality. So another question is how do we measure and control water quality? So the answer is very simple by measuring and setting standards. You may now ask what standards? Well let's go ahead and discuss some of the most commonly measured ones. So here's a list of some of the most important qualities or parameters that we need to measure in order to set a water quality standard, which is also known as the Water Quality Index or WQI for short. Among these parameters, we have total suspended solids, total dissolved solids, turbidity, pH, conductivity, dissolved oxygen, temperature, phosphates, nitrates, and fecal coliform, or E. coli. So, now join me to discuss more in depth some of the most common ones from this list that we just read. Total dissolved solids, total suspended solids, and particulates in water can be measured by a test called the turbidity test. In this test, you have a cylindrical, long and transparent tube with a colored surface at the bottom as seen in the picture at the bottom right. So as the cylinder is filled with water, it becomes more and more hard to appreciate the color differentiation at the bottom. Once the bottom is no longer appreciable, then we stop filling it with water and we measure the height it took us for us no longer to see the bottom. pH is a measure of how acid or basic also known as alkaline, a liquid solution is, in this case, water. The pH scale ranges usually, at room temperature, from 0 to 14, and 7 is considered neutral pH. If the value is below 7, the water is considered acid. If it's above 7, it's considered alkaline. Conductivity of the water refers to how well can electricity pass or conduct through the water. The electricity passage is allowed by ions and metals dissolving water, such as salt. Dissolved oxygen is also an important parameter as oxygen needs to be dissolved in water for living organisms, such as fish, can breathe. Yes, if you didn't know, fish do breathe oxygen. If there isn't a high percentage of dissolved oxygen in water, fish, among other organisms, may die. The deeper you go in the water, the less oxygen you'll find dissolved in it. Temperature is another important parameter and just states how cold or warm the water body is. 
Phosphates and nitrates are an important one. This may be found to reach water bodies after these bodies being in contact with fertilizers, pesticides, cleaning compounds, and some rocks. The important thing about these chemicals, phosphates and nitrates, is that their presence allows for algae and plankton to grow up rapidly in water bodies. As any other aerobic organism, these organisms need oxygen to survive, so the more of them, the more oxygen consumption, therefore less dissolved oxygen in water for fish to breathe, which will eventually cause them to die. Finally, another important parameter to measure is fecal coliform, which is actually measured by counting the amount of E. coli bacteria found in water. This bacteria comes mainly from human and animal feces and is most frequently used as a parameter that determines water quality and contamination sources. So the question is, what are some of the most common sources for water contamination? Most commonly, industrial waste, people, constructions, industrialization, wastewater plants, farms, among many others. Hope you have enjoyed this lesson and have learned some more about water pollution and water quality. Thanks.